You've probably heard the term cinematic video on YouTube, it gets thrown around a bunch. But what does it actually mean for an image to be cinematic? And can you really achieve that look with a mirrorless camera? Let's find out. The truth is there are so many important factors that go into creating a cinematic image. It's not just one thing. But today we're gonna to explore some of these factors and teach some common techniques used by professional filmmakers to create these film-like images. So I think the term cinematic in this case is actually synonymous with depth. All the principles that we're gonna be talking about today really just ladder up to adding more dimension to your final image. Rather than just talking through these principles, let's actually see them in action with this nighttime car scene. In today's video, I will show you how I went from this to this using a few simple tricks. First, let's talk lighting, the far side key. This is the most common tip for good reason. Having your subject between your light source and camera instantly adds more dimension to your image. Just look at the difference between this shot, which is lit near side versus this shot, which is lit far side. Having your key light on the near side just flattens your whole image out, which eliminates any opportunity for depth. Tip number two, the checkerboard frame. So honestly, I like how this image looks already. I think you could honestly stop here, especially if you only have one light. But let's say your scene calls for more level or your director wants more light on your subject. Here's what I would do. With our key light looking good, let's add a small backlight. So it's gonna hit the neck of our subject just to pull them out of the seat a bit more. I also want to up the ambient level of the car so nothing fades totally to black inside. To accomplish this, I'm just using these small magnetic lights that I can just stick right to the inside of the car. I didn't like that the back window was totally black, so I added one more hard light to hit the back window and his seat. Like I said before, we're going for as much depth as possible. And in order to accomplish this, a lot of movies will utilize a checkerboard frame, which is alternating light to dark points across an image. Next, let's play with the color of these light sources. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color temperature of the key light and our backlights to be warmer. This will create the feeling that maybe this light's coming from a street light or a house. To create even more separation, I'm gonna utilize color contrast with my hard light hitting the seat. I'm gonna turn that completely blue, make it more of like a stylized moonlight kind of feel. I always like to have lights on the opposite end of the color wheel to maximize this effect. Next tip is adding foreground elements and texture. Whenever I'm shooting video, I like to add elements in the foreground and kind of dirty up the frame a little bit. If it's too clean, it feels kind of contrived. So a reason I chose this composition was because I could shoot through the frame of the windshield, again, adding more depth. You'll also find that it's raining during a lot of nighttime car scenes and movies. This adds some cool reflections and highlights, so I tried to recreate this. I don't have a rain machine or a hose, so I just use a watering can, and it sort of worked. You can kind of see in the image there are some nice little highlight points on the window and then even a drip down the windshield. As far as camera settings go, I'm shooting on the Lumix GH6 in Vlog, 24 frames a second with a 180 degree shutter angle. I did some light color correction in post just to play with the contrast and alter the colors a little bit and just focus your attention on the subject. So can you actually shoot a cinematic image with a mirrorless camera like the GH6? Absolutely. The GH6 is a super powerful camera with a lot of incredible features. You don't need the most expensive cameras to make compelling images. It's more about what you shoot and how you light your subjects. If you like this video, please leave a comment on what sort of lighting scenario you'd like me to tackle next and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.